Uh, the conspiracy theories never stop. They never stop. Oh, Wayne, I couldn't hear him. I was wondering where he's at. Wayne, what's up, man? Can you hear me? I can. All right, very cool. Now, let me pull you over to the screen uh, so they can see. I got another uh, picture from my dinner up on the screen last night, Wayne. All right, now. Uh, what did you have for dinner last night? That looked pretty good. Uh, well, it did, and the dinner was good, too. Um, but, uh, yeah, I had, actually, I had, well, there was a Caesar salad, and I didn't finish it all. I still have, of course, I have to have Caesar, Jay Caesar here. I uh, had a Caesar salad uh, and uh, chicken fettuccine Alfredo, which I still have some of that left, too. And uh, my um, tour guide, as I said there, companion, uh, had uh, salmon, which was so good. Some of the best salmon I ever had, because I had a little sampling there. Uh, so it was really yeah. good, really good place called San Bravo here uh, in Merida, Mexico, Wayne. Congratulations. That looks like a I, – when I, when I saw that, I was like, oh, my God, they've got good food in Mexico. <laughs> oh, yeah. They have a lot. Of, yeah, they do. The food is one of the best things here. I saw you cooking steaks last night. Those look pretty good too. Oh, yeah, that marbling was pretty nice. They were yeah. delicious steaks. Yeah, they look very good, I have to say. Now, tell us what's going on, because we saw it at uh, towards the end uh, of the last show, Wayne, uh, and they're trying to kick you out of your house, basically. What's going on there? Okay, there's the paper. Yeah, I can't see myself on the screen. It oh, just I'll has fix that. I'll fix that. Yeah, so it would help me with there you go. presentation later. Um, so if anybody wants to screenshot that, Move my fingers out of the way. So I live in a ghost town, and up the mile, up the street, are 500, 500 homes that are vacant. And my street has nine hundred lot. I'm sorry, nine lots, not nine hundred. Nine lots that are vacant, and I live on one of them. And I was the only lot that didn't have any buildings on it. The other lots have buildings on them, or trailers, or some kind of structure and lots of debris and trash. So all nine neighbors got one of these notices from the County of Riverside Code Enforcement Department. And it's a mixture of clean it up or else we'll do it for you and charge you a lot of money kind of thing. And then um, they say that I have a construction without permit and that's your you house, don't need right? a permit yeah that that's my house and so my house is built to such a small size that you don't need a permit what's going on i hear motorcycle uh there's motorcycle okay i don't know if somebody's out back but we'll let it go for now i mean if they come <laughs> to the front i'll go talk to them it's winter time and in the in the desert in the winter time is when people go off-roading so southern california treats the desert as a place to go off-roading and i'm in the off-roading zone basically okay. so I'm a, i have it could just be innocent people just cruising well, just by. monitor the situation oh. if you have to step away that's fine but uh, uh go back to the story no, so you cool. said your, your your house is not big enough to require a permit that's right but they're saying it is construction without a permit now that is i have three three neighbors three lots that have garages that are not built without a permit and the reason i know this is because they stole the garage how do you steal a garage well there are two car garages and somehow they brought my neighbor a friend of mine his grandfather created this town they're multimillionaires, and um, he bought those he bought 20 garages from the place where the 500 empty homes are at the mine there's a mine this kaiser steel mine it's called a iron mount or iron iron eagle mountain and he bought the garages from them and then so he's got 20 garages on his property not permitted so they stole those not permitted garages and put them on their property over here anyways they all got a notice but none of them none of their notices say construction without permit so then so basically they are cherry picking who they're punishing so i'm being punished they're not making the law equal different people are being punished in different ways so it's it's this is a witch hunt type of thing basically two weeks ago the sheriff uh, uh, i got a video surveillance system here 
Yeah. As you, as you can see, I got a, it's up in the air about 30 feet. Oh, I see. Oh, my, my screen went dead. Hold on. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I see the uh, the sheriff coming down the driveway. Uh, He's coming so down now. Outside. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no. okay. You saw it, yeah, yeah. Thursday, yeah. Okay. Two weeks, two weeks, no, two oh, weeks two ago. Weeks, yeah. They got a swatting call, and normally they call me. Everything okay, Wayne? Yeah, everything's fine, and they don't come out. So I've been swatted sixty-one times, and in, in sixty-one times they've come out. Because it was so dangerous, they had to drive two hours, one hour here, one hour back. It was so dangerous, they had to drive an hour, one way to make sure I'm still alive. They're here to save my life. So they drove an hour without even calling me. And then when they get here, they're like, oh, yeah, we know the call was bogus, Wayne, but I wanted to introduce you to the new guy. I'm like, I shook his hand. Hi, nice to meet you. And I said, did you want to see the property? Let me show you what I got here. You know. I showed them my my metal shed and they're like oh that's a new structure i'm like yeah i just built it and i said it don't worry it's the building code because it's so small you don't need a permit they're like whoa we're not code enforcement then two days later a code enforcement truck drives by and then two weeks later i'm being evicted by code enforcement and when they came here there was eight vehicles eight SUVs, four sheriff department and four county people. And then the county people are the code enforcement. And then they had four human resource people who are like, we're going to get, I'm like, you know, I'm very, you're evicting me from my property. You're making this impossible. You're saying I need to get a building permit, which costs $6,500. That's insane. So I got to get a $6,500 building permit for my building that cost me $2,500. Or else I can't live here. I would say, can I get a trailer and live in it? No, because you need electricity and you need a permit for the electricity. So then when they're done, they're like, oh, and if you feel like fucking killing yourself, saw that. Here, here's six phone numbers or seven phone numbers to call. And they're the the the, the people who are uh the uh the people making the notices are all willing wearing bulletproof vests because what they're doing invites violence because they're destroying people's lives. Wayne, the whole thing is just completely fucked. Why are they fucking with you in the first place? I saw some people speculating that maybe it's because of all the swatting calls or maybe some trolls called them uh, to fuck I with really, you. Like, what do you think? It's probably both. It's probably all the swatting calls. The The sheriff's department feels um, impotent in their ability to catch them. So instead of catching the criminal, they're punishing me. Like, I haven't fucking done shit except being a law-abiding, tax-paying citizen who owns property, free and clear, living off-grid 60 miles from the middle of fucking everybody. Like, I'm so, like, the only further away I could be from society is on Mars. <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, I, I mean, so, okay, so the whole thing I'm is not completely gonna move. They're going to have to kill me. They're going to kill me here. I'm not leaving. No. I'm going to fight them. Now, wait. Uh, well, we'll see. Maybe you can get it taken care of. Hopefully it doesn't come to that. Yeah, hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully it doesn't come to that. But $6,500 for a building permit? Uh, how does that even happen? Like, I don't I don't understand that at all. Well, that's, those are, that's California. In Mississippi, it's $20 for a building permit. And when you offer, when you ask for a building permit, then you submit plans for a building. I had, dra I had drafting in high school, two, uh, a year and a half of drafting. I could probably draft up my own plans because I'm sure it's on uh, CAD, computer aided design software. And I'm sure there's like, uh, get started with CAD. Let's start by building a, a shack, right? <laughs> we're going to build a shack to code. I'll be like, take example, make it California compliant, send email to Riverside Sheriff's Office. That's what I'm building. Now, so did was anybody sympathetic to you or did they just not care at all uh yeah there were people sympathetic the uh the human resource people who help people find uh, homes to live in i'm like you guys understand i was like this is 1933 germany i'm a jew and <laughs> it feels like hitler's, hitler's kicking me out and here it is 2023 <laughs> and you're kicking me out it's i'm not a 
I'm not a squatter. I own this property. So someday you're all working jobs and someday you'll buy a home. Imagine you being kicked out of your fucking home. Well, you know, I, well, some people are confused. Well, no, I was going to say some people are confused because they, they didn't know that you owned the property. They thought you just went out somewhere and, and built your, your, your house there. Uh, that's not the case. You own that property. Yeah, I own this property. Now I would, that is fair to say, if you thought I went out and just stole some property. Yeah, I mean, if they kicked you out in that regard, that would make sense. Honestly, if you were squatting. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. But no, I own this property. I put the property in my friend's name because I owe uh, somebody $6,000 and there's a judgment. So I'm doing, you know, like some legal shielding. Don't say that on air. <laughs> I've already said it. I've already well, said it. Okay. Well, be careful. I know how that type of thing goes, of course. Um, that's why it might be helpful to have, have a senorita. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I've heard of that type of thing <clears throat> happening. But uh, be careful uh, what you reveal here. But the property's owned regardless, uh, and it's not. It, oh, I, I have a quick claim deed in my name that is legal, and he uh, did a notary stamp on it. So he, he quick claim deed the property to my name. So as soon as I solve my my six thousand dollar debt to this to this uh, bank, it was Wells Fargo Bank that I borrowed money from for image deposit, actually. Um, then I'm relieved of all these problems. So, so what's your plan of attack? Not literal attack, of course, but um, how how are you going to try to? I don't want to be careful. How are you, you going to try to solve this? And I put out a little video yesterday. I didn't do a show, but I wanted to try to get some more attention I on thought. it. Of course, and yeah, of course, we have you on tonight to talk about a little bit more. Um, but what's your what's your plan of attack here? Well, um, it's only been three days now. Yeah. So first of all, I've got so the way this document reads, it's not complete. They don't even have a case number. There's no case number. It's blank. To be determined. Yeah. And then also for people to understand, they're like, oh, I thought you got evicted. What are you doing cooking steak or whatever? I saw somebody said that on Twitter. Well, you don't get evicted immediately. That's not how it works. They they serve you a notice of eviction and then you have a certain time period to challenge it. Right. So I've got 30 days to comply, which means I have to get a building permit in 30 days, submit plans, and then allow this building to be inspected. So I've got to cough up $6,500. I've got to make building plans and then I have to submit them all within 30 days. So that's not possible. Then they'll be like, well, we're going to extend, extend it now that you've got building plans. They say I've got a, a accumulated rubbish. I'm like, this is not rubbish. This is my business. They're like, but what about those, the washer and the dryer and the pinball machine? I'm like, those are, this is how I make my living. I get free things from Craigslist that are broken. I fix them and resell them. It's not, it looks like rubbish to you, but it's not rubbish. It's my income. It's my livelihood. They're sitting on fucking pallets. Rubbish is that little piece of trash over there against the fence, you know, like a, a thing that floated. But, you know, maybe I could come to your house and nitpick all the bullshit. I bet your house is not picture perfect right now. And I could call it rubbish. Like, fuck uh, these people. Well, somebody cleaned mine this morning, but uh, yeah, I know what you mean. Uh, check out those coppers houses. I'm pretty sure they're uh, dens of ill repute there, if I had to guess. Um, have you have you got any contact from anybody trying to help you? Well, I've... Yes. I Well, no and yes. Uh, nobody's contacted me. And yes, people are trying to help me by donations. So, so far... Uh, I think I've received $375 in donations, which is actually quite a big deal for me. That's a lot of money. I only needed $200 to fix like December's problem financially. And so I'm super grateful for the donations. And that has absolutely helped me. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And then I, 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 I called one of the suicide hotlines. I'm not suicidal, but I called one of these numbers and I'm like, could you just listen to my story? Like, I just need somebody who's not going to call me, not tell me to suck a bag of dicks and not call <laughs> me a faggot. <laughs> like, you know, if, what did they imagine, say? Oh, oh, go ahead. They're like, wow, that is super 
tragic. I can't believe this is going on where I live. I'm so sorry this is happening to you. They're very empathetic. Their mind is blown that somebody can be swatted 61 times in 20 months. They're, they're really surprised that they're living in a place that that, that kind of criminal activity. I, I, I think at the end of the day, the swattings and the sheriff, it comes down to them. I'm using my hands, milking a cow. I used to milk cows and you, you really? squeeze the, and you, the yeah, I used to, well, in high school, we had a cow that made milk. And so I had to milk the cow twice a day. So you squeeze the tit, the udder and like this. So the sheriff is milking. Yeah. So first the, the like, this is the udder and you, mm. you clamp and then you squeeze and then you let go and the milk comes back down and then you clamp and you squeeze so anybody milks cows knows that i know how to milk cows oh wow i've never yeah. actually done that yeah it's not it, it's actually pretty easy i mean you just it's the clamping the clamping squeezes off the milk in the bottom of the other and then you squeeze it out and then you go Psh. now what about uh have, have any lawyers contacted you i was I'm gonna try to reach out to a couple I know, maybe, and try to try to help you. But uh, I was hoping maybe somebody reach yeah. out to you. Not yet. Please reach out to your attorney. Let me say that I will split the money with them 50-50. This is worth millions of dollars. Nobody to be swatted once is worth a million dollars. To be swatted sixty-one times, that's worth sixty-one million dollars. I agree. Uh, I've been swatted like 12 times, so 10, 12 times. So I should have a few million. So bad that you had to move to Mexico, right? Yeah, it was one of the reasons, yeah. Um, I got swatted here once too. And then the cops came and they said that'll never happen again uh, because oh, they'll just ignore that it. They don't have the again. same rules in Mexico. Like in America, they have to come check it out. Uh, but in Mexico, they don't. <laughs> so they came that one time and they're like, oh, this is complete bullshit. And I said, yeah, the guy who could speak English. And I said, yeah, it's people online, you know, trying to fuck with me. He said, okay, don't worry about it again because we won't come back out next time. So that was that. That's wonderful. Like, literally, can you believe Mexico is better than America? It's much better. Uh, here in the Yucatan, it's not even really a contest. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's better in that regard, too. Uh, the cops just, just should... said, no, they won't come. Uh, so maybe your attorney friends would be willing to at least talk to me because I'm not doing anything against the law. Like literally being poor has become a crime in America. It's true. It's true. And then, you know, it's so costly to fight this stuff. And I know about having a case out in California uh, with, with no lawyer and uh, you know, it's costs all this money. They're trying to bankrupt you basically to get you to drop 10, 20 grand uh, on lawyers. And so that's really uh, the name of the game there. Um, and it's so, like I said, it's so expensive. You know, it's hard to fight stuff like this uh, on your own if you don't have, you know, a, a, a lot of capital there just to dip into it. And you're not going to make any of it back. It's just lost money, right? Like it's well, just in my case, end. you will make it. In my case, I well, will maybe, make yeah, it back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so there's something called exigent circumstances. And so exigent exigent circumstances allow the police to go into a home without a search warrant. That's right. And, and so they have entered my home without a search warrant uh, maybe six times because they believed exigent, exigent circumstances exist, maybe. However, when I was sitting in the back handcuffed on the screen, it said possible swatting. So if it's a possible swatting, you can't believe it's really happening. You can't believe that Wayne killed his girlfriend with a brick and he's got a gun to his head. You can't believe that's true, especially since I warned them in advance with the with the approval of the FBI. The FBI, I said, you know, maybe I should tell the sheriff that I'm being swatted and you're, you might get some crazy calls. So just put a big notice. If something crazy sounds like it's coming out at my home, that people are fucking with me. I'm not asking you to investigate or find who the fuckers are. It's because I'm running for president, like literally. So this is election interference. True. So just ignore these motherfuckers. And the sheriff is like, we're not ignoring them. We're pretending it's all real. We're going to Wayne's house, meeting the next president. I don't know what, like, are they really this low IQ or are they milking? That's why he started with milking. Are they milking it for overtime? It's like, boss, 
I'm going home. I put in my eight hours. Hold on, Sergeant Johnson. We just got to call the Lambright. Want to get some overtime? Hell yeah. yeah. Who wants to go to Lambright's house? I do. I do. You know? So then they all come that. out here. Yeah, go ahead. They're all coming out here getting overtime because it's, it's a minimum of two hours and 30 minutes in the car. It's just money. I'm yeah. six, it's just free money for them. I'm not a threat. Then they got to write it. Oh, and then they get back. They got to write a report. They get paid to write a report, upload their body cam footage. But, you know, Napoleon Bonaparte said, never interrupt the enemy when they're making a mistake. So that's why I've been cordial to these dumbasses because they're making, they're hanging themselves. I mean, they're not going to get the multi-million dollar lawsuit, but they're, their department gets a half a billion a year in money for the 3,000 deputies. I'm going to sue them. And it's worth millions and millions of dollars. Now, why are you being targeted like this by the swatters and stuff? Like, what what is happening there? Well, I think it's just because I'm running for president that, okay, so if I was like two plus two equals five, God damn it, people would be like, poor Wayne, he's so dumb. He's just so dumb. Just love him. He's just so dumb. But it's because I'm right. I have figured out secrets to anti-gravity, gravity, unlimited electricity, and I'm running for president. And I said, Israel did 9-11. Hey, if that's I'm probably super what wrong. Did. Yeah, that's probably what did. Yeah, it's the, Israel, it's the Israel part. Like, if I was wrong about Israel doing 9-11, they'd be like, ha ha, got any evidence? <laughs> and I'd be like, here's the evidence. Whoa, <laughs> destroy that. <laughs> now, did well, you get that? Get that out of here. Now, did you say you were going to go to your local synagogue to see if the, if they would be willing to lend a helping hand? I am. I'm going to uh, find out all the different synagogues in the next, well, this region, about an 80-mile uh, radius, which is Palm Springs. And, like, Palm Springs is Beverly Hills of the desert, mm -hmm. th this area. There's a place called Rancho Mirage, which actually is in Indian Wells or the, Palm, or the Beverly Hills. I've heard of Indian Wells, yeah. Yeah, uh, Bill Gates owns a home in Indian Wells worth like $12 million. So I'm going to, there's going to be some synagogues. And I'm going to say, listen, I'm a poor Jew living in the desert. They're like, like Moses? <laughs> Maybe they'll Modern help day me. Moses, Wayne Lambright here. Uh, do you think they'll help you? I do. I do think they'll help me. Now, why do you uh, think They so? have no choice. Well, they really, they, I mean, they do have a choice, but uh, I think they will help me. I think like, well, okay, so who has, well, does the the rabbi at the synagogue have connections to influential Jewish attorneys who want to help other Jews? And I would say there's a high probability of yes. Will they be horrified that I was swatted 61 times by this Trump loving um, sheriff department? That's true. You know, so I think there's a high probability that I'm going to get protection from them. Um, it's just taking me a few days to strategize on how I'm going to win this. Now, I see uh, Coco Berries in chat says, Wayne, do you remember who Jonah is? They, uh, and then he says he's taking credit for your swattings in the past. Yeah, Jonah, Jonah is the number one suspect. And he goes by Plank and GX Racer might be Jonah. And Mr. Medicare might True. be Jonah. Now, why do you say that? It seems like something he would do, to be honest with you. Well, I say that because on the first swatting, um, when I got swatted 12 minutes after the swatting was over and I turned down my stream, he uploaded the video of me being swatted and he made fun of me. You think he did it for content? Yeah, he did it for content. Exactly. He's like, I'm going to swat Wayne. He's he. So that's so it kind of it does prove that Medicare was watch i was doing a stream that was an hour long and then at the end of the hour i got swatted so he had already been watching an hour and then when i said goodbye to the sheriff and i turned off the stream 12 minutes later he uploaded a one hour video so that means he was watching the video as i was being as it was streaming so there's a high probability that he did the swatting he was watching my video he was capturing the video and he had it on his computer. And then 12 minutes later, he uploads the video, which means he has a fast internet connection, which is not mobile. And he made fun of me. 
It's possible so he his ridiculed wife, it. His wife helps him too. She's been known to be involved in ops like this, so it's possible uh, that she was involved too. You know, he's allegedly infirm. He could be lying about his cancer and stuff, but she could have helped coordinate this. Absolutely. And the FBI, I told them I'm, I'm going to do an interview with Medicare, and they're like, well, be careful. They, they're very aware of him. Really? And yeah, they're like, well, just be careful with that interviewing. That's what they, they gave me like a warning. The feds? Yeah, the FBI. What all did they say about him? I didn't know he was on the federal radar. Well, they, they, I said that, um, I might be doing an interview with Medicare and they're like, well, okay. The, the, the pause on the okay was the okay, which means I'm not sure why you're doing that. <laughs> and they're like, just be careful. I'm not sure why you're doing that. Okay. Just be careful. And which means they have been monitoring him and observing him. He has all the trade craft of a spy and I was going to be a spy. Really? I thought about joining our CIA or actually going to another country and being a spy. So I learned a lot of trade craft and I know a lot about how that world works. Most, you know, most of it I learned before I thought about becoming a spy, just like what's a dead drop and look, yeah. all that technology, the way they communicate with one another. Um, Do you think Medicare may be a spy for a foreign government? Absolutely. I think he's a spy for Israel. <laughs> <laughs> he's probably not even irish you know what i didn't think of that but uh, that would make all the sense in the world if he was working for the Mossad. absolutely Mossad like he had, yeah Mossad medicare Ooh, that's a nice coining right there he had the verification badge on twitter for being a bully like there were no other bullies on twitter except for that's medicare right. that's right there were no others there he was leading the like, charge how do you get away with being a bully on twitter so he must be having the inside juice I, you know i i've not thought of this i'm just having an epiphany here on air uh but that would make a lot of sense it would explain his actions over the last few years i i um i didn't actually know who he was from the beginning and then about uh four years ago i i just did a a three or four hour in you know dive into who mr medicare is and i saw somebody did some videos about mr medicare used to do this and this and that and so he used to um shame people for trying to make money online that was his stick shtick for a while sure and then um this was before gamergate and then um he at one point i probably after gamergate which made him he might have been the original the internet aristocrat. He was, yeah. Now the he was him. the internet aristocrat. I thought was Milo. I thought Milo was the internet aristocrat. No. Yeah. I so was around, he called. I was himself, involved in all that. Yeah. All right. So, so he became the internet aristocrat, which is a person who thinks they know more True. than others and they're privileged, and and that earning money from the internet that's beneath him because he's an aristocrat. And then he got so butt hurt over all these people making huge money on the internet. Guys like Mr. Beast is making 50 to 100 million a year from YouTube. And Mr. Beast is owned partially by Disney. He's like a boy band. He's like Backstreet Boys. They're like, who wants to do a YouTube channel? And they interview people and he's produced. So he's not an, an organic situation. And so Mr. Mediker went from being, uh, I'm an, I'm an internet aristocrat to send me some money, buy my stupid hat. Meanwhile, he's never shown his face. There's one photo of him, which is the outline of, of his face. And he does look like a Caucasian person. It's hard to distinguish what he, you know, his true identity, but he's got like, he's got a nose like mine, straight nose. All right. He's fat, Wayne. Actually, uh, he got a DUI. Is he? Yeah, and he was like uh, 260 pounds uh, or something like that. So yeah, he's kind of a he's kind of a fat guy. Uh, I don't know. Maybe the cancer's taking some weight off of him if he really has cancer. There is no cancer. You don't think so? He is the cancer. There <laughs> is. He is the cancer. There is no real cancer. There's no doctors. 
There's no chemotherapy. It's all of, he's a professional grifter. You know, he's got enough skills to be an intelligence agent, which is obscuring your identity, masking your identity. It's all, it's, it's, it's part of being um, an intelligent agent is masking who you really are. And then it's communications with the home office. And well, that's 25%. And the last 25% is getting people in foreign countries to give you the information that you're seeking. Mm. So you might, your, your whole job as a spy is actually to make, to befriend people. So a spy needs to be incredibly charismatic. You need to be a people person. You people want to be your friend. That's what a, a spy's job is to be the most likable guy in the room and everybody wants to be your friend in another country. And then like hypothetically, the nuclear scientist that you, a government's trying to get information, you befriend the nuclear scientist and you're like, oh my God, you're such a genius. Like, how do you even do, how do you make the stuff? How do you make the uranium from the rocks? He's like, well, we got a secret. We use electricity and ammonia you know like that's like spill the beans or you're like you know you should come to my house for dinner my wife makes a good something and you're what bring your wife with you and then they befriend them over time and they're like by the way would you be interested in doing this and then they no. you know they're not going to cough they're not going to cough up the secret stuff right away so then you say listen you know it's such an, a repressive regime that you live under would you ever have you ever considered living in America? Oh, I'd love to live in America, but I could never get a visa. Well, what if I could get you a visa for you and your family? Would you tell me how they do the secret sauce? And they're like, yes, I would. And then they said that 90, it was a huge percentage that like 90% of the people will give you the secret information just because they hate their government. A small percent, 5% do it for money. Do I forget you know what the other five that he's married to an alleged uh, Chinese national. No, but that makes total sense. She's pretty hefty too. Maybe that, maybe that's what it came from, but, uh, two piggies. Yeah, that's right. A couple fat fucks there in Minnesota. Uh, but yeah, she's allegedly a Chinese national. Uh, so is it possible that he got her some credentials to live in the United States and that they've been running ops ever since? Well, he just by marriage he can green he can give her citizenship because of marriage yeah but he had to get her in here in the first place what do you think there was some money some some kind of government yeah. consideration sure yeah yeah absolutely uh we can get his identity because of the swatting at his own home so i know you know we know where he lives we know his address in minnesota and so we could we could do freedom of information act and get the body cam footage from the police of the guy who answered the door at his home. Remember, I had said on one of your streams before, we, we could find out his identity by putting um, hunting deer camera, the tra trail cams on the trees around his home. <laughs> you could just contact the neighbors and say, you know, I see you got a surveillance camera. Could you give me access and could you point one at his home and I'll pay you some money per month? Hey, you've thought about this clearly. Yeah. You know, there's been some people who thought about going up there to unmask him. Do you think that's yeah good? Absolutely. All his you no. Know, so I could send any. I could send postal mail with the stamp, a letter to all his neighbors. Do you know who you're living next to? And then give them link a link to a website like my website, Lambright.com, and say uh lambright.com slash medicare neighbor or something and then have a link to all his destructive videos he's a he's a he's a he's a monster and so they're living next door to a um a basically a, he's a terrorist he is an online billy he's a social terrorist he he talks shit about his whole video is about talking shit about everybody he he put he talks shit about everybody, but he doesn't allow anybody to talk shit about him. He's racist so, too. Did you know that? He's he's racist. Well, there's nothing wrong with being racist. <laughs>
one of his few good qualities is that, yeah. like you know like even a black person <laughs> laughing their ass off at me right now like <laughs> racism is like god's gift to humor we have to laugh at each other well you know what i didn't think but his his neighbors may not like that he's in minnesota so there's probably not many black people up there but i'm just thinking of ways you know you might get his neighbors to cooperate well yeah uh well his neighbors besides somalians you know there are some somalians up there he claimed to have contracted tuberculosis from a somalian i don't know if you know that that's not a joke by the way he did oh, i didn't know that yeah well He's a uh, there is a movie called Grifters with Angela Angela Hewlin and um another actor for, uh, and it's it's really good it's called it's, I think it's called Grifters American Grifters or something like that mm -hmm. and um he is a professional grifter he has a throwaway identity Mr. Medicur um that Morton Shecklestorm is a YouTube channel that he that he used to own in 2012 and that uh, that's the name of one, one of the people who's been swatting me. He goes really? by Morton Berg. Yeah, Morton Berg Shecklestorm. I've got proof. I send it to the FBI. Well, they probably won't do anything because he's a spy. They won't. Yeah. They, I mean, because he's Israel, right? That's right. Yeah, he's got if, Israeli. If I was 20 years old, I probably would have killed him. No. With a knife or a Wait. shotgun. But I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy anymore. You wouldn't do that, to be clear. Don't. No, no, not anymore. Don't have a kid. But I would have. I was a violent person in my youth. So this is why you want me to be a president, because I know I know the capabilities of violence. Be careful. Um I no. know, being careful. I don't own firearms anymore because of this reason. Because you might not you I can't trust shoot, yourself. I can't shoot somebody if I don't have a gun. Is it because you couldn't trust yourself easy? not to go take out Medicare? That's right. I can't trust myself to not take him out. <laughs> i could drive there but since i don't have a firearm can't do it I mean, you could just beat him senseless with your bare hands you're a pretty big guy yeah i could just sit on him <laughs> but, but, but i've realized like like the tr like my brother i'm mad at my brother the true punishment for my brother is that he stays married to his beast of a wife that's why that's, that he lives. that's Masad Medicare's punishment too, I think. Yeah, Masad Medicare, exactly. Him and his 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 piggy wife. Like we should be sending him, we should destabilize him with uh free vodka and free pizzas. Just make them blimps, get them, you know, just encourage bad behavior. Him. Destabilize him with free vodka. I like that idea. He's a drunk, so yeah. Um oh, is he? Well, even yeah. better. Well, we'll find out what his what his alcohol of choice is, and just send it to him free. Uh huh. Mm. Yeah. He likes cigarettes send, too. Actually, we. Oh, does he? Well, we find out what brand. Camel. We could nail we could nail it to the neighbors and say, "Listen, your neighbor, he likes vodka and cigarettes. Could you just drop these on his door?" Don't be too busy smoking and drinking. Mm hmm. And we could, not we, but. <laughs> Tobacco's gonna get him. Ah! <laughs> He's gonna wish he had cancer. In twenty years, he'll be like, "Guys, I'm actually dying this time." Oh man! So you think the whole cancer thing's a complete fraud? Yeah, like so. Said so he's never shown his face. Is what I wanted to say. Over the last like fifteen years since he's been on the internet, so from day one he didn't show his face except for that one photo. That's very it's in the shadows yes so very either he wasn't he either he was an intelligence agent from day one or he got picked up to be an intelligence agent he is exhibiting intelligence agency behavior he's really good and of course like i'll give him some credit he's well spoken he's he's good at editing and he is funny if you like being cruel to people you know he makes his 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 shtick is making fun of internet idiots it's kind of like america's alleged. funniest home alleged. alleged yeah yeah so it's like he just makes fun of p idiots from the internet do you consider yourself well, an idiot I, from the internet no 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 i don't but i can see how people do see me as an idiot i see it 
Why do you think they call me a laugh out loud cow? And um, but I'm I'm trolling them. Like I I overshare in a way that's not normal to bait my audience. Like I overshare photos of where I live and my my life and everything about me because I've turned my life into a soap opera. What's going on with Wayne? Yeah, I know. You know what's I going know. on with Wayne? People are like, why do you even watch that guy? Well, uh, I don't really know. They they don't really know. They do it because it's a soap opera. Like I'm just sharing my life with them and by doing so then other a unknown actors enter my life and sabotage things which creates more drama that wasn't intended like i knew running for president there would be a smear campaign they would say i had sex with goats no like way. literally some goats are pretty cute right mm, I don't, i'm not sure about that. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> now what do you think about the overshare has that worked out how you planned or maybe back off on yeah it has bit? worked out like i'm running a presidential campaign with no money and i'm i'm known across america to at least the youth i've created a penetration that you couldn't create otherwise i'm only running it at politically incorrect because politically incorrect is full of influencers these in, politically incorrect is actually the intellectual place for people on the internet to have political fights. There's no other place like it. And so these are the people who upset everybody at Thanksgiving. There's 20 people at the Thanksgiving table and somebody says, well, you know, I think Israel attacked America. Huh? Why would you say something like that? Like they have the courage to say the truth. And so if I could convince these people that I'm a good political candidate to fix America, then they could spread my message for me. So I'm making, um, these people my secret sales force yeah i that, yeah i can i can understand that i can understand that um uh, now why why do you like uh poll so much oh it's the very best like literally it is the intellectual battlefield there is no place anywhere else in the world where all the where literally the spies of the world go in there plant their seed water their crops and harvest the fruits of their labor it is it is the most intellectual place you could ever imagine because of the lack of censorship wait poll is there the is most some intellectual place it is can you name another place where ideas are discussed at such f fervor the kill stream well yeah you're you're the video version of poll well <laughs> <laughs> uh, how did you get into to poll in the first place? How did you start doing that? Well, I learned about it from a New York Time. I'm, I'm sorry, um, Time Magazine said uh, they had a, an article and it said, these are the top 10 people. It was a top 10 contest. Person one, person two, person three. But the first letter of each name spelled moot. Vertically. <laughs> so they hijacked this secret list of winners to spell Moot's first name and last name. I'm That's like, so holy cool. shit. These are the spies I need to hang out with. Like, I used to be a, a subscriber to the magazine 2600, which is the NSA magazine. What? Are you familiar with 2600 magazine? Oh, no. Okay, so 2600. That's the frequency of a whistle that used to come in Cracker Jack, the candy. And if you blow the whistle on a payphone, it allows you to make long distance calls for free. What? So Cracker Jack. No, I heard you, but I, a, I've never heard that. But yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. So back in the 80s, when you bought Cracker Jack, sometimes there was a whistle, which was two six. It was a special frequency of a note, of whistle, a, a musical note. And if you walked up to a payphone and pulled the receiver up and blew a whistle, it would say, please dial your phone number. And then you can make a long distance call for free at a payphone. So that's why it is the Hacker Magazine. And then um, all the articles in the, in the magazine start with, do not do this. This is for entertainment purposes only. Now, and you can buy these, you can, you can still subscribe and you can get them used. Uh, it arrives in a brown paper envelope and it's it's staple bound and it's usually about 80 pages it's a spy it's like a soldier of fortune 
magazine for now, mercenaries. Now you mentioned, um, you know, telling families or you know your family that Israel did nine eleven. Have you ever told yours that? Um, and are they like big supporters of Israel? Is that part of the fallout here? No, no. My family, they really just care about themselves. Mm. They they don't care about anybody but themselves. They don't care. Well, if Israel did nine eleven, well, didn't it, my mom would say doesn't affect me. I'll give you a great example of my mother. I told my mom with great enthusiasm and worry that the government is going to try to um, enlist. What is it called? When there's a war and they a draft, you know the draft that yeah. they're going to try. They change the law to draft women, and she said, "Well, that doesn't affect me. I'm 72 years old." I said, "Mom, it's not about you. It's about your granddaughters." She goes, "Oh no, my granddaughters could get drafted." I'm like, "Yeah," but her first reaction was, "It doesn't affect me." I think all I'm women 70. are like that, right? Yeah, they just don't care if. It... <laughs> I would like to think some women are not like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I'd like to think it too. Uh, <laughs> here, here's a question from Ada Wolf. Hold on a doll sec. wolf sent one dollar on Rumble. It's coming in. My oh. uncle told me about that whistle trick. He also had a list of number sequences to put into phones that would let you make free calls too. It would override the call center programming. He said my uncle told me about that whistle trick. He also had a list of number sequences to put into phones that would let you make free calls too. Uh, it would override the call center program. Yeah, they call it phone freaking. Somebody mentioned it in chat. I think that was uh, uh, Wendigo there in chat. I've heard of things like that, just not the whistle specifically. Powerchat.life slash the Ralph Rumble Rants and others. If you have some questions for Wayne uh, here in the in the final part of his interview. Um, well, yeah, I'd like to think it too. Maybe I'm being too harsh on on women. Do you think people are too hard on women or not hard enough? Not hard enough. That's what I think. Because the, because the real women would say those ladies are bitches. Women have a role in life and it's to protect their husband. Who is the, who is the provider of the family? The traditional wife uh, meme is actually real. A real woman says a real woman stands by her man. But a feminist throws her man under the bus because True. you know we're strong. True. Feminism. Independent women. Was a yeah, they don't want to be stay-at-home moms. They want to go work and you know throw their for minimum around. wage. Yeah, it's pathetic. like basically there was only so many workers in the workplace, and men that there was a deficiency of workers because there was no women, and so the men were able to get at least a livable wage. But as soon as they women entered the workplace because of feminism they re they uh, were able to reduce people's jobs so women have actually sabotaged everybody's success women basically got paid to be a mommy and they could by if all women united to be mothers and didn't work then this the workforce would be required by men and they would be forced to pay men a livable wage well, now they get money don't. off the state. They get money off the state, and then they go online and brag about it, uh, and shit talk their husbands. Quiver. Yeah, it's well, they're 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 Her ex -husband. a lady, a, a woman told me that she had a, she knew another woman who was having babies because they were for God's quiver, which was a bucket of arrows. Her children would go into the military to fight God's wars, so she was just having babies to join, the, and she knew that they would join grow up and join the military to fight in the war and that the government was paying for her to have those babies so her she's got the golden vagina right mm. um but her children are dying in zionist wars if if you really want to fight back like i'm a i'm a computer programmer and i actually i'm not an original hacker uh, hacking doesn't interest me because i know because it's law breaking I did learn what hackers do to protect my own system, but I'm not like such a great hacker, but like I can break into a Windows 2003 server. I know how to break in without a, a, a the, without an administrative passwords. I can break into a 2003 server, which is actually super James Bond shit. I'll tell you how I do it. I've got a special CD-ROM that I put in the drive and I reboot the server in um, the, um, the, the, the Anyways, I, I boot to the disk. I boot to the disk. And then it runs the disk. 
And then I overwrite the administrative password with my own password in the encryption that Microsoft used. So then when I take out my disk and I boot it, then I've rewritten on the hard drive my own password. That makes sense. That's a pretty good. Yeah. yeah. And the only reason I know this is because one of my friends who works at CIA gave me the disk to break into my own server. Now, let me see. Uh, hold on. I'm trying to coordinate this too. Um, okay. Sorry. This uh, <laughs> uh, a little uh, conflagration here. Not Nothing big, but I might have to uh, step away for a second. Let me see. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, sorry, I was uh, coordinating there. Um, we gotta, we gotta get you some more donations, Ralph. We gotta step you it gotta up a little bit. Yeah, we gotta step up your donations today. Step it Come up. Come on, give Ralph, give like Ralph support money. Ralph and having me on his show today. That we're trying to bring America back to its glory, and we're trying to divorce ourselves from Israel and Zionism. Yeah, show your support. Show your support. I agree. Powerchat.live slash the Ralph Retort, Killstream.live slash tip, dollar sign, Sunset Squad on Cash App, Rumble, Rants, Hyper Chats on Odyssey. You're right, Wayne. I appreciate that, man. Um, yeah. It was, good to, it was good to have you on. We're not done just yet, but um, um, where do you go from here? I saw you're, you obviously you've been kind of bummed about all this going on. How have you kept your spirits up? Food. <laughs> I get food stamps, so I do get $290 in food, and um, I'm eating my troubles away. I had steak last night. I've got um, some nice pita bread. F focaccia bread is really thick mm. with, like, tomato. It's, it's Italian kind of bread from Trader Joe's. So I'm eating my troubles away, and, um, well... If I'm going to be homeless, like I could, if they, I, I have many, many solutions. If I can't live on the property, my neighbor is a multimillionaire and he might let me live on his property because he's got many, uh, he's got, I don't want to give away too many details, but sure. um, we might be able to go into business with, he needs my services. Um, no, I will give away some Tito's. He's got uh -huh. about a hundred cars. So his family used to have a tow truck service. And so all the cars that broke down in the middle of the desert are in his, his property. And there's many vintage cars that are very beautiful and worth lots of ridiculous money. You wouldn't believe it. You would think it's a trash. But um, like a pickup truck from 1965 could be worth $50,000 if it runs. And it's nice. So that kind of thing. And um, so he, he, we, he and I already agreed. He that if i fix it and get it running and different levels of repair we can make more money and he would split the money with me and i didn't want to do that initially right away because i'm running for president so i don't want to overcommit and make promises i can't keep because i'm actually a man of action so if i say i'm going to do something i'm going to do it so if i'm going to run for president I'm going to run for president. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm running for president. And in my spare time, I'm working on anti-gravity. So I have I have uh, 11 months and 20-some days, 25 days to win this election or lose this election. I can uh, raise $4,000 from individuals and unlimited money from corporations and political action committees. I think they're going to fund my, my campaign because I will siphon votes away from Donald Trump. Are you worried about that? That's I'm not worried about losing. No, I mean about siphoning, making... siphoning votes from Trump. Oh, you don't. I mean, what if Biden gets in there again? I win by losing, you see. So like my my coffers, so I have my, with the Federal uh, Election Commission, I set up a bank account and then I get donations. Like I, I could receive millions of dollars from corporations. I could, it's very feasible to have $100 million in my coffers for losing. And but well, Wayne, you can't spend that money. It's the uh, it's the it's your committee's money. That's true. I can pay myself four hundred thousand dollars a year. I can build myself my own multi million dollar campaign headquarters. I can buy a fleet of vehicles for all my employees to use. I can buy my employees breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day if I want, and I could also partake. 
Like literally, I can spend all that money in any, any way I want. I could buy myself some showgirls. I could have my own showgirls that travel with me. And if they want to give me blowjobs, they can. If they don't, they don't. You know, like, <laughs> like being a politician, you're making the rules. Here, hold on one second. Can you, you talk gotta, talk for a second, Wayne? I gotta step away yeah. just for a second. Talk for now that he's gone, Israel did 9-11. <laughs> um, I did share a video on 4chan. Uh, Ace, Ace Mark or something. It's uh, it's composite video editing. And we'll have to... I'll tweet this video. I tweeted it a few days ago. Oh, but actually, there are no the airplanes. There's no... Yeah. There's no airplanes that hit the World Trade Centers. I know. Like the guy I talked to last time, uh, Hershey... He lied. He didn't see the airplanes. There's James no Gardner airplanes that hit the buildings because there's no airplane debris. The it vaporized. Cool. Isn't it funny that only an airplane vaporized, but all the steel is still there? The steel didn't vaporize. The windows didn't vaporize. The carpet didn't vaporize, but the airplane selectively vaporized. Isn't that weird? So, you know, the media made a story for low IQ people. But people with a bigger IQ can see all the holes in it like Swiss cheese. There were no airplanes on 9-11. When they say, the pilots say, I can't believe an amateur made that maneuver because it's a computer graphic maneuver. It's video graphics like a video game, and airplanes can't make those maneuvers in real life. And also, somebody calculated the speed of the airplane, and it was going faster than that airplane could actually fly. So... They fucked up on the speed. They fucked up. On, if, the, if the plane went boom, fine. But it curved and boomed. And uh, the airplane can't do that kind of maneuver. So they fucked up three ways, in the speed and then the angle of attack. And then the building is like this, but then the nose points out the other side. It shouldn't point out because the nose is made of fiberglass. The structure of the nose would not – it would not – exist after it impacted the building it would be crushed like an aluminum can hmm. second off topic we went to the moon but not with rockets we went to the moon with ufo technology the rockets went into outer space and then an, a ufo controlled by america america picked up the astronauts and flew them to the moon that's why the alien reproduction vehicle has a grappling arm inside its belly so humans were on the moon, not by rocket. And I know that's super controversial. What other things do I want to say? Uh, if you do want to investigate the Illuminati and the Freemasons, there's something called... Okay. There's Sorry, a Wayne. Movie. Sorry, Wayne. Uh, I, uh, my door... Welcome got, back, Ralph. My door got left open. I was worried my cat uh, would run out, so I had to go. I had to go. Oh, you got a cute cat. I, I love cats, man. Yeah, I have two. Cats he was just sitting there, though. Cats. He didn't even he didn't even make a move. Uh, so I was worried about that, and I had to go look. And I was looking outside, and then I looked in his chair, and he was um, he was just sitting there. So um, I are you going to get another cat? I have two cats. have two cats. Yeah, I have two, so I don't need another one. But uh, Cleo was was in her room, but I was worried that smoke had gotten out. So um, I think you should like when you're done live streaming. You should just live stream the cats for hours. I think people would donate. You think so? Oh yeah, just put the camera on them where they're sleeping for like six hours. Yeah. Okay. Let me let me suggest a YouTube channel called Cat Sleeping, and it's eight hours of the cat sleeping with your donation buttons. I think people would. I think that's money making. Yeah, maybe I will. Uh, maybe I will. Like put a microphone, and you could hear them purring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know what maybe i will maybe i will try that way uh good call there do you have you don't have any animals out there no because of the damn rattlesnakes i killed 17 rattlesnakes 17 uh-huh in the last 20 months or 24 months now here goes a super chat hold on neko sent five dollars on rumble Wayne, Hold what do you think about Sean Cross, Octagon, the Pharaonic Swiss, and the Empire of Darkness? Based or cringe? 
The code says, Wayne, what do you think about Sean Cross, uh, H-R-O-S-S, Octagon, the Theronic Swiss, and the Empire of Darkness? Are they based or cringe? They're probably based. I mean, if you got a group of men who had named themselves the Empire of Darkness, that took some thinking. <laughs> you have to be based. You got to be based at some level. Like, you you don't have girlfriends if you're if you're joining a club like that, because your wife would be come to dinner. Hold on, I'm talking to the Empire of Darkness. That makes bitches pussies wet. What do you mean, Wayne? If you're part of the Empire of Darkness, that gets them wet immediately. I agree with you. I agree. So it's for alpha males. Alpha males only and alpha males only. Uh, We're alpha males. Yeah. You know, I'm a sigma male, which is the lone wolf. Hmm. Yeah. Sigma males are uh, basically alpha males look up to me. They're like, if only I could be like Wayne, the sigma male. He doesn't need anybody. He just does it all himself. Like, well, how does Wayne get things done? He doesn't care about getting it done. Like, I don't care about power. I'm just powerful. Now, um, before we let you go, would you ever consider becoming a Freemason? Yes, I tried to join the Freemasons before. I'm not going to do any, 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 you know, any butt play. No. Is that part of the Freemason agenda? I didn't. I, at some level, I think it is. It's like you can only achieve the higher levels if you accept the uh, the God of Shaft in your in your glory hole or something <laughs> blow jobs you know, like 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 the the whole triangle is like the third eye is your asshole is what they're, trying to say. Like, they're trying to say the third eye is your ass that by taking a cock in your ass if it, it feels so good that you're so enlightened you're like oh my god i didn't know that had such a pleasure button back there they're like we've been trying to tell you <laughs> the third eye, the one up here, is an is an asshole. All right, Merch hold on. sent three dollars. You steal my cat. Uh, on the dollar the, bill, uh, beef Ralph. the top of the pyramid. You steal my cat. Merch says. Merch says. I don't know if that's really Merch or not, but he said, "If you steal my cat channel, we have beef Ralph." <laughs> well, it sounds I've like it saying, might actually be him. I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. I was gonna. One idea for my retirement was to make a. A dog or cat rescue, a nonprofit organization. Mm. Like if you got a cat with three legs, donate him to me, <laughs> and I'll keep your cat alive. I won't euthanize the cat. He can die uh, an, a normal, horrible death. And <laughs> uh, so, if I had all these rescue cats, mm. um, the only reason I came up with this idea one day I was talking to uh, an old woman when I lived in Guerneville, and. Um, she told me that, yeah, I don't have any children, and that when I die, I'm going to give my house to this uh, cat society. And I'm like, holy shit. That's kind of awesome that she's giving her cat her home to the cats. And um, and too bad it wasn't me, right? Like, I'm like, you want to get married? But um, so she's giving her home to the cats. So there must be thousands of lesbians who are giving the home to the cat foundation. And then I started to notice there's lots of cat, well, there was a few, uh, there's lots of cat foundations and there's cat foundation thrift stores where the thrift store's purpose is to help damage kitty cats. Like you could adopt a cat at this one thrift store in Santa Rosa. And I'm like, oh, this is genius. Like, cause when you have a nonprofit organization, you have to pay employees and, but you can't carry over profit. So all the money's got to be spent or given away. And so they, you can pay yourself $10 million if you want. There's no law against paying yourself a huge salary. And so that's how 503C corporations, nonprofits are kind of la money laundering. So I thought about having a cat or dog rescue mm. and that um, I would have video cameras on the cat and dog 24 hours a day. It would be the cat channel or the dog channel. And it'd be like, this is these, these are the names of the pets in this room. The white one is fluffy, the brown one is scratcher, whatever. Please <laughs> donate so these cats don't starve. Like, you know, people are gonna be drunk. They'll be like, okay, I'll give you five bucks. And then I invented a way, I haven't built it yet, but basically, how do you push a button 
on the internet and then the food is given on the other side of the internet to the cat like it's a feeding mechanism via the internet so imagine it's skype or it's a, a zoom meetings for pets so you can live video conference with the pet and then push a button and food is dispensed for the dog oh you, you can, can people oh yeah they could they could uh, pay money to trigger like uh, interactions with the animals or something exactly you're gonna feed the dog anyway so why not put his daily food in the hopper and let the internet push a button to dispense the food mm. and well, you would have somebody kills them by giving them too much food they, because there's only so much food in the hopper oh okay true you know you're gonna you're gonna feed your animal so much food per day like a cup or you know like a half gallon a dog chow whatever whatever their food is for the day you put it in the hopper and that could be 10 dispensers or five dispensers and when it's gone it's gone but let the internet give food to the dog or the cat you could make a rope i could make a robot like a it comes over and it's got an arm and then it pets the cat and then you're controlling the petting from home you like could pet the cat's ass if you want. you could pet the cat's head if you wanted so how do i how do i build robots that interact with the animals from people's homes for micro payment i can build this actually yeah it doesn't sound like a bad I, idea actually yeah, it's a pretty fun idea like imagine how many depressed people there are that would love to have a pet like me and want to interact with some cat like the cat sleeping for for one dollar you can go over and poke it with the with the <laughs> robot <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> for one dollar you can wake that son of a bitch up and fuck with him yeah you know what yeah. sounds like a winner Sounds like a winner there, Wayne. Now, let me ask you, man, how can people help you with the eviction? We talked about some other stuff, but we talked about eviction at the top, and that's really why I got you on here. Uh, now, how pe how can people help you if they want to help you? And um, what's the timeline on everything? Well, we I need an attorney to fight them. An attorney would say, oh, yeah, this is a civil rights violation. The fact that you've been swatted 61 times is I, I probably am the most swatted man in American history. After I'm dead and gone, I will still probably be the most swatted man in American history. Like there is a political witch hunt against my truth. They wouldn't be they wouldn't be mad at me. Two plus two equals five, Wayne. No, they're mad at me because I'm right. They're not mad at me because I'm wrong. They're mad because I spoke a truth that should not be spoken. I said basically the emperor has no clothes. That's that's the crime I've committed. That I spoke a truth about a power structure, and I'm actually what do how do I profit from this? I'm not. I'm basically just a patriotic American who wants to have a chance at the American dream. I'm not asking for somebody to give it to me, and I've I'm you know I've worked hard my whole life, uh, so I just want to provide a level playing field for immigrants for everybody when earlier when i said i'm racist well that actually is true however everybody else is racist you ask a black person what they think about white people and they'll be like oh they're not going to say oh white people are cool they never they never crack jokes you know they're going to have some opinion about white people it's the human race it's not called the human equal <clears throat> uh, true so we're we we all live we we're all born, we all live, and we all die. And so what I'm trying to do is increase the standard of living for all human beings. Like we can, if you look at the dollar bill, 80% of the one, every 80% of all money is owned by the 1%. And mathematically, that means 80 pennies in every dollar are owned by the 1%. And us 99 percenters, we have to live our life raise our children, build our homes with the, the last 20%. When the rest of these rich people have all the money, it is, you know, history has shown, if, if we were to, if I was to, to make a prediction about the future, I would be based on the history, which is history has not allowed this type of inequity, imbalance. Usually those rich people end up dead. So 
Um, that type of power and that type of power structure is unique to this time in history. And I don't think it's going to continue. I don't think this power structure will continue. The Rothschilds have over $500 trillion in wealth globally. So it is the Rothschilds who are controlling the world. And I don't see this power structure to live much longer. Their money is saturated in the, the corporations. Mm -hmm. Like Wall Street should maybe be abolished. I would consider Wall Street a type of financial gambling. There's many states where gambling and casinos are not allowed because gambling is a type of um, vice. People can't control themselves from gambling. They'll, they'll risk, they keep, because it's a dopamine rush when you win. And as people will gamble their life savings away. And that's what's happening in the stock market. The stock market is a type of gambling. And also there is absolutely entrenched insider trading through the elites. Look at Nancy Pelosi. She has like a $500 million nest egg on a $300,000 salary because she got all this, all these insider trading tips that she funnels through her husband as a, uh, a money laundering situation. All right. Now, how can they help you though? Uh, if they want to support you, well, they can donate money to my, if you go to my lambright.com, uh, I, I got my cash app and my Bitcoin on there. And at the bottom of all my videos, which is Wayne Lambright, I, 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 or LLL on YouTube. Um, they, there's my donation buttons there. Uh, well, what's your I really just need here? What, say it so they can. Oh, oh thank you. Lambright 2024. Okay. Yeah. Right. L-A-M-B-R-I-G-H-T 2024. Lambright 2024. Okay. I was just making sure you got it here on air in case they don't go. To your thank site. you, Ralph. Like, thank you so much. And also my, my Twitter is rabbi, a desert rabbi 2024. I like that. R-A-B-B. -B. Thank you. Have you considered becoming a rabbi? Uh, I've considered it. Rabbi means teacher. So there's many levels of teacher. Uh, for me to, you know, I get a degree in um, theology. is That takes four years or more. I would love to do it. However, I really feel like my path in life is anti-gravity Mm. and politics because i have a i have the willingness to speak a truth and i don't and i'm not really so concerned with what people think about me i just want to speak a truth because there's a certain people who do agree with me they're like wayne is actually talking the truth it, it might be unvarnished but at least he did say it so you've been waiting for somebody to say it and at least wayne said it so maybe we should give wayne a chance at running our government we've tried dipshits for years maybe we could try wayne good point like none also, of these none of these politicians are exceptional i was gonna ask you mary jane's in the chat she said do you have a venmo i don't mm. all right well yeah i've only got cash app and uh, bitcoin i don't have a bank account so um <laughs> so I, I that's part of my struggle well, we'll work on it. And uh, Wayne, I wish you the best of luck and we'll keep you, you know, in our thoughts and we'll bring you back on the show as events develop uh, with the Thank you, eviction here, man. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to help you as much as I can. I enjoy you coming on the show. Of course, we talked about some other You're doing a great here. job. Thank you, man. You're doing a great job. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And please that. send Ralph some money. Thank like man. Ralph needs money too. That's true. Um, Ralph does. Yeah. And I appreciate you saying that. I appreciate you hyping them up. Uh, Merry Christmas season to you. Uh, and just keep us posted, man. It sucks that this is happening during Christmas too. It's even worse that they're trying to fuck with you like this during Christmas. Uh, and so I hate that. And, um, anything I do to help, uh, here, I see gravity enjoyer three. sent $3. I'm more pro gravity than anti-gravity. Gravity says gravity enjoyer says I'm more pro gravity than anti-gravity. Well, they're both the same thing. They're, you know, Gravity is actually high voltage electromagnetism. The iron core is not molten. Molten iron is not magnetic. And we're taught in school that the iron core is molten, but it's not, it's solid iron. And since it's iron, it induces electricity from the sun, which is not a hydrogen furnace, it's actually a plasma discharge on an electrical universe, which, and everything I just told you is physics heresy. However, 
if you adopt what I'm saying, it is the truth. So everything I just told you works. So if the sun is electricity, the iron core induces electricity and transforms into an electric magnet. If you understand something about electromagnetism, it has a factor of 30 zeros behind it. It's one of the most powerful things in physics. Richard Feynman couldn't even describe, one of the most famous scientists who invented a way for a, a what, string theory, a special diagram, and he worked in the Manhattan Project. He said magnetism blows his mind. He can't even, he, he says, I barely even can attempt to describe its power. So wow. the whole universe wow. is basically electromagnetism. Wayne, I'm going to have to cut you short because we got a debate coming up here on the show, but uh, we'll get you back on. We'll talk some more uh, about anti-gravity, and I really appreciate it, man, and uh, wishing you the best. I love you, Ralph. Thanks for all you, your man. help. I all Thank right. you, brother. Bye -bye. We love you, too, and take care of yourself. Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CACA Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.